I take a look at the Ranger 80 antenna system from Res Antenna. Is this your next HF vertical? We'll keep watching to find out. On the first look, the Ranger 80 antenna system is a clone to the popular Wolf River coil, and for the most part, that could be the case. But I would say that the Ranger 80 is the Wolf River coil elevated. There are some significant design features that make the Ranger 80 different and worthy of consideration for a portable antenna system. Now, I'd like to thank Mike at Res Antenna for loaning me the Ranger 80 antenna system to me for this review. Uh, this is a pre-production model, and I'll be returning it back to him after the review. The Ranger 80 from Res Antenna is a multi-band vertical antenna with a base loaded coil. It is precision made out of high quality parts for a high degree of rugged, rugged ability and performance. What makes the Ranger 80 different? Well, let's look at the specs. Uh, the Ranger 80 coil is machined out of premium materials. The bottom of the coil is Delrin in 6061 aluminum. Uh, the hardware is all stainless steel. Everything is anodized black for a beautiful outward appearance. Uh, the coil itself is a 14 gauge stainless steel. The coil is 21 inches long, weighs in at a, at a hefty three pounds, five ounces. The coil is rated for 200 watts sideband and 100 watts digital. Uh, this is assuming a 50% duty cycle. Instead of a collapsible whip with the Ranger 80, it comes with a seven section military style whip of brass and stainless construction. Uh, this is also painted black to match the coil. Uh, the extended length of the whole whip is nine feet, three inches. When you combine the military whip with the coil, you'll have an effective tuning range between the 15 and the 80 meter bands. A shorter accessory whip is available if you want a 10 meter and higher coverage with the system. The Ranger 80 system comes with a ground spike. This is a stainless steel, it's 17 inches long. The spike is similar to the design model that Chameleon sells. But if you are in hard or rocky soil, or like me, dealing with frozen ground, Res Antenna offers an accessory tripod machined out of aluminum. Their Z-Pod is 15 inches tall and has one half inch thick aluminum legs to take up a 17 inch footprint. I feel that the most innovative feature of their Z-Pod is the ring on the bottom so you can add a sandbag or other weight to keep the antenna upright in uh, windy conditions. The final piece is the integrated radial system. The Ranger 80 comes with four 33 foot ground radials. The radials are constructed out of 18 gauge stainless, stranded wire and have a banana clip on the end. Uh, the base of the coil has eight sockets, so you can plug the radials in and spread them out in any direction. With eight sockets, you could also add radials if you wish, or if you wish to arrange them in a different configuration. Everything comes in a premium backpack. Uh, the coil and the whip can be lashed to the sides, and uh, the accessories and your other gear can all go into the generous main compartment. Uh, there are also smaller compartments on the front, along with a laser cut moly webbing, and there's a flat pocket in the back that's hydration bladder compatible. All in all, this system is extremely well constructed with high quality components. Uh, the antenna system is made in the USA with US and imported parts. I'm just going to jump in here and say that if you found this video interesting and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. That's my indicator to provide more of these types of videos. Thank you for your support. So how does it perform? Well, I took the antenna system out for a weekend trip and I used it on two parks on the air activations. Since I'm very familiar with my Wolf River coil operation, I really had no problem assembling the antenna and getting it on the air. Deployment took about six minutes. I can usually get my Wolf River set up in about four minutes, so that's not so bad. Uh, the longer radials took a bit more time to spread out uh, than the short shorter 16-foot wires that I'm currently using. The six-minute time excludes tuning and adjustment. At my first park, I started using it on the 40-meter band. It tuned up to about 1.7 to 1. Uh, Resonance was good, but SWR was a little bit high, and I really, but I really wasn't concerned about that. Unfortunately, uh, band conditions weren't the best, and 
I was fighting against a solar flare that weekend. I quickly moved up to the 20 meter band. So I managed uh, 50 contacts in about a half hour on the 20 meter band, all with excellent signal reports. So I know that the antenna works. The next day I went into another park and conditions were a lot better. I got the SWR down to about 1.5 to 1 on both the 20 and the 15 meter bands. I also pulled in 105 contacts at that second park. Uh, with a few nice uh, DX stations and also W5REZ, the owner of Res Antenna. Appreciate it, Michael. Have a great day. You too. Have a great activation. Any other park to park stations? Yeah, Whiskey 5 Romeo Echo Zulu. Whiskey 5 Romeo Echo Zulu. Uh, you are a 51 Wisconsin park number Kilo 8205. Back to you. Okay, I got the Huntsville, Texas. She'll, um, the, the system will figure out the parks when we submit the logs, so it's probably not critical. Okay, Roger that. Uh, thanks, Michael, and uh, good to talk to you today. Hope you have a good activation. 7-3. Seven, 7-3, three. Seven, three. yep, it's, it's going great guns. So <laughs> uh, 20 meters is kind of shaping up, so thanks a lot for the contact, 7-3. This is KB9VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Echo Alpha 1, Golf India Bravo, 51 Wisconsin, park number Kilo 8205. Back to you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for the Spain. Have a great day, 7 3. Now, these on air tests really aren't an indicator of the Ranger 80's true performance. You know, my experience. Uh, tells me that the Wolf River coil is going to operate and perform in a similar manner and these in these challenging conditions, uh, band conditions and location just weren't the best. But the Ranger 80 performed admirably and it was well suited for these really tough conditions. So what's the good and the bad about the Ranger 80 antenna system? Well, there's a lot of good things about it. I really like the construction. Uh, the antenna is uh, practically bulletproof. It's made of high quality components. Uh, there's a very high attention to detail. Uh, just let me give you an example. At the top of the antenna is this lip. It perfectly matches the collar and is just at the right spot to keep the collar from falling off the coil. The collar action is stiff, but not too stiff. And uh, the stainless steel tab is curved. Uh, with these style antennas, the tab is where the heat builds up. So if you can maximize the surface area of the tab, uh, you can reduce the heat buildup. The accessory legs are also well thought out. Uh, the ring at the bottom of the base is a great feature to add weight or a sandbag. Uh, the, cons the connections on the coil are all 3 8 by 24 thread, so you can add third-party accessories like the MFJ or Chameleon Whip to extend the tuning range of the coil. Now for the bad. You know, the downsides of this antenna system aren't overwhelming, but there are a couple of th issues that I'm sure will be called out. First is the radials. While I really like the construction, I found that going with shorter 16 foot lengths are easier to work with and provide better tuning on the higher bands. Uh, most of the time is in setup and teardown was spent uh, dealing with the radials. So the first modification I would do would be to make shorter radials. Fortunately, this is a really easy task because the system uses a standard four millimeter a banana plug. So I can make my own radials for it. Second is the price. And I know the system is going to get beat up about in the comments in that regard. The Ranger 80 antenna system currently retails at $525. This is certainly a premium over what it would cost if you were to put together an equivalent package from Wolf River, Buddy Stick, or other sources. So you need to keep in mind uh, what you're getting. The Ranger 80 is a mechanically superior antenna system. These are machined parts, aluminum, Delrin, and stainless steel, not PVC. Fit and finish are at a whole different level. Does this mean it will perform better? Probably not. But at the end of the day, we are talking about two different things, a Chevy and a Cadillac. 
Both will get you to where you want to go, but one is going to do it with more style. Bottom line is I really enjoyed using the Ranger 80 antenna system. I like the durability and rugged construction. I love the intention to detail, and I think that it is a great choice for someone looking for the very best in portable antenna systems. So what do you think? Would the Ranger 80 fit into your portable antenna needs? Uh, do you feel that it addresses the shortcomings found in other vertical antennas? Well, share them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. But that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73. Yeah, it's a bit, it's quite the pileup <laughs> that that happened. So um, uh, glad to be on the air today. Have a great day, seven three. KB nine VBR parks on the air. QRZ.